All right, let's begin. Evening, guys. I just went to fill up my uh, went to fill up this, and it basically came apart, and all the liquid went everywhere. So, so I'm a little bit late starting. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to Thursday tonight's Mega Sixty Five night. Praise be the spiral and all that. Uh, hopefully, you can hear me all right. Music sounds a bit bad, so I'm just going to notch it down ever so slightly. But it's been a spiral indeed. Oh, God's sake. My fingers now smell of like a rancid cherry cola flavour. Uh, but hopefully now I put a new coil in it, so hopefully it's uh, tastes better as well. It's so slimy now because it's got liquid all over it. Ah. <sighs> I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're not going too crazy with the um, with the challenge. Um, I've seen some interesting um, talk about it. I really like the concept of MCB, uh, the Mega Cycle Bite, and that's I think how I'm going to refer to to it from now on. It's a good measurement. I like it. I don't know who came up with that, but it's a it's a good good measurement. Um, and and he des describes the um, describes the the unit perfectly. Uh, so brilliant thank you very much for the uh, sub warlock appreciated oh and thank you for the resub kenneth mirror and thank you andy for the host cheers guys um so i'm drinking copperberg tonight i have got uh one can of uh mojito to drink as well uh add some leftover ah. Uh, thanks, Five Sprites, for the bits. Cheers. Hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you again for all your kindness with the uh, Nexuses. Uh, so I don't know if Jill has watched or Jolt's watching, but um, this is your Mega 65 ready to go. Uh, I was just waiting on the little customs documents enclosed thing. It was supposed to come today, but I think, I think someone's nicked my parcel, my Amazon parcel. So... Um, I, I will make sure it's posted by Monday anyway. Uh, it'll probably be collected on Monday. But yeah, that's that's ready to go. And then I've got actually that one's that one's empty, but I've got the next one. Next month's this is March's prize ready to go. Still wrapped in the wrapper. So I'll start trying to print out the, the cases ahead of time for that so I don't have to spend so long. But yeah, hopefully you've all been doing doing all right with that. I see a lot of uh, interest in it, so um, it's pretty good. Does it have your name written on it? No, no, no. Unless your name is, change your name to Nexus, then uh, then, then no. Um, okay, so what I wanted to do tonight was just uh, double check my animation stuff. I was thinking a little bit about the sprite caching. Uh, at the moment, it's disabled. Uh, well, I, I say it's disabled. The the recache is uh, forced, uh, so there's no um, uh, there's no cache age basically. So any time a any time a, a frame is required, it, it's automatically re re grabbed again. Um, but if you look, let me just quickly load this up so you can see. So I put um uh, why is it not loading? Oh, there we go. Uh ten K, yeah. I put um I put a little border kind of colour change around the um uh around the fetch for one sprite and you can see it's nothing. Uh, you see it there at the you can barely see it. It's uh right at the bottom of the, the screen it's like one raster line less than one raster line almost um so i think i think from my point of view even if we were to to fetch every single frame every uh, every frame fetch every sprite's frame um it still wouldn't be an awful lot so i mean it's going to get a little bit longer with dma fetching uh with a sorry DMA uh, run length encoding fetching, but not by much because it's still DMA, so it's still going to be still going to be incredibly fast. Um, you join literally one second before before the add points. Uh, no, was not add point. There was. Oh. 
also let me do this so i'm going to give andy 10 points head start if i can find him in here oh it's working as well oh my god oh not quite there we go right Well, I, I thought I'd give you the ten points to start because you. I mean, technically, you're on. <laughs> you're on to probably thousands by now, uh, and it's your system, your namesake. So there we go. I just noticed it. It's it is showing me the drop down menu now, but in a very weird way. Um, I'd found a way around it, but now the way the way the drop downs appear makes it slightly more complicated. So. The rest of us get a head start too. No, <laughs> just dandy. It's his. It's his name. He's. He's. Yeah. He's. Oh, AMK. That's a point. I should maybe do a little AMK table as well. But hopefully, he should show up in the table now. I did do some testing to. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Um, I don't know why it's missing the end of his name off. I guess it misses the end of his name off on the other one as well, just because of shorter thing. Yeah, because it's got a stupid long name. So there you go. You can now you can now earn the points. So, um, and I have a clear AMK button as well, so I can clear all the points as well. So it's good. Every, everything's functioning now for that. What did you win? Uh, some pride. Uh, you win more AMK points. Yeah. Well, that's what you won. You won 10, 10K, uh, 10 AMK point head start in this season. I'll spy you all if you do. Uh, someone will, though, monsters. I promise you. I promise you. Okay, so, um, yeah, so you can see from, from the... Um, from the rest of time it's taken it's not a lot to to generate that one sprite um and as i say at, at the very at the very most it's going to double the length of time when it becomes a uh, run length encoded from dma so i'm not too fussed about the actual cache age stuff um you know keeping keeping a sprite in the in the um in the sprite cache for longer it's just not needed oh yeah let me start the quiz timer there you go um so i'm, I'm for now i'm, I'm going to leave the code in there it doesn't need fixing uh because when i turn the turn the recache off the force recache off it displays all the frames once and then fails so it's like it gets to the end and then it can't can no longer find the sprite so there is a bug i need to fix in that um but for now it's not going to prevent me from doing anything with the code and it's really not going to save me many cycles anyway so uh, i'm not going to bother too much with it right now um so what i thought i'd do tonight is uh macro these things up a little bit because there is it's awfully messy this uh this system and i, I want to uh i want to create a, a macro system around the animations so i'm going to create some macros up here now uh i don't know if i've mentioned this before i think i probably have but um uh but with uh with macros in kick assembler they you can't like bury them in scope they have to be on the top uh, top level uh, top level kind of uh, scope um so that's a bit frustrating that you can't have animations dot and then a macro but um it's fine we can kind of get around around it by doing you know just having the word animation in it somewhere so that we know it's related to this so what we're going to have here first of all is um let's have a look Let's let's go with add animation, and we're going to pass in an index, which is this value here. Um, we're going to pass in a start and end. Do we need the start and end actually? Because the start and end is that this could be generated on the fly. Um, because once you've set the animation up. Think about this, right? So you've created an animation, and that animation can be assigned a sprite. So if you remove, yeah, uh, yeah, it can. We don't need the start net. Okay, so we'll build a system around this. 
Uh, thanks for the resub, Monster Go Boom. Appreciated. Thank you very much. Cheers. Is anybody else drinking with me tonight, or is it just me? It pisses you off about kick macros. Yeah, it is a bit annoying. I wish I wish they would uh, fix that. There, there must be a way of doing it somehow. Because you can put them in there. It doesn't complain, but it can't find them. So I'm just wondering if there's a way of kind of making them available, like externing them somehow. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'd have to experiment. There might be a way. Um, who was somebody was doing uh somebody was doing a parser for kick i can't remember who was doing it but they they might have a better idea it might have been chromos actually uh okay so yeah what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create the macros at the top of the file uh and then we're going to create a little system around this as well so what we're going to what we're going to need here let's just put the parameters in for this so we're going to need a width and a height so this is how many um how many uh, raster rewrite right let's let, in fact, let's put some documentation in around it as well so so add animation okay um actually i don't even know if this works but i'm gonna do it anyway index so this is our uh animation index it's fairly obvious um width of animation in RRB sprites. Uh and this would be the height of the animation I'm gonna the reason I'm documenting all these I'm I'm not sure if this will actually work with this. I don't think it will, but um uh just coffee you have some work to do uh to work to finish off uh wasn't drinking anything i might get boddington's night boddington's Are you from manchester gas and the only people i ever know that drink boddington's are from manchester um because it's a manchester bitter so and it's uh i don't suppose it's very well known outside of um outside of the UK, but um, certainly more more people I know from Manchester drink it than anywhere else. Uh, Copperberg. Yeah, I'm drinking, I got a Copperberg for in a bit. Copperberg is dangerous, it goes down with it. Yeah, 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 it does, it's really easy. Scousers do too, but don't tell them thanks. <laughs> no, you're from Cambridgeshire, okay. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of bitter, but I don't mind don't mind a Boddington's. It's, it's very tasty. Also, I remember. Do you remember the um, the adverts for bodies with, with um, oh god, what was the name? Melanie, Melanie. I can't remember her name. Last name. Melanie Mel Sykes. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, Melanie Sykes. I think that's why most Mancunians drink, drink bodies. They were, they were they were victims of good advertising, or, or not even good advertising, classic advertising. You know, stick stick a hot lady on the uh, on the advert, and and you're done. Okay, so we're going to use index width and height because from width and height we can work out where the sprites start and end. And I don't want to actually burden the, I, I call it the user. The user is me, but um. Um, what I mean by that is I don't want somebody who's using this library myself to have to necessarily know which sprites are be which raster rewrite buffer sprites are, are being used or not. So uh, when I when I use the term user, I don't mean the player because obviously the player is not going to be doing this. I mean uh, the the user of the libraries. Um, it's a term I don't hear very often actually when when people are writing libraries, and you you really should uh, think about think about the um, the other side of the library, like the use of the library as being a user. Um, far too often people just kind of write something and then write another bit, you know, to, that uses that and without trying to separate them. You should try it, always try and separate the concerns if you can. Um, okay, so what we're going to have then is is some variables here. So we're going to have um, 
uh, some vars here. So we're going to have a sprite index or next RRB sprite index. I'm going to start that on zero. What this is going to do, this is going to be used to uh, keep a record of what sprites need to be set up here. So the first thing we need to do is uh, work out the number of sprites. So, uh, and that is quite easy. That's going to be width times height. So that's that's a nice simple one. Uh, from there, we can work out what sprite numbers at the start and end are going to be. Oh, and this needs to be attributes. Let's just call it ATTR. It's easier. animation attributes and we'll make some constants inside here for that now the the annoying thing with constants is they can't be constants if you want to access them outside of here they have to be uh, labels uh again i don't know why there's some weird choices been made in in gig assembler but um it's fine we can work around them um i kind of see labels as constants anyway labels and constants are interchangeable in terms of uh in terms of the, their kind of immutability, I, I believe. I don't think you can change a label once it's um, once it's created. Um, but it's just annoying that I, I would have preferred constant to be the one that you can access outside, or or both of them accessible outside, and just treat labels as as these things here. Um, but they're they're kind of interchangeable almost. Um, so I am going to create some. Uh, I'm going to label them constants here. Uh, just to make sure we know. And these are going to be our attributes. So we've got these these values here in the attributes. Um, so uh, animations dot, uh, I'm going to call it ATTR, H flip, uh, and this, do this all with binary. So, so it kind of matches. So H flip, V flip, looped, wrap. Oh, this is ping pong, animation, enabled. Okay. So V flip. Uh, loop. ping pong we need to test some of these uh, out as well at some point but I'm not going to do that now um, animation direction back or forwards uh, wait have I, have I seriously made the default backwards I have haven't I oh, let's, let's flip that around so if I just do that um, so I need to sort it out first because I want this to be okay so that is uh, let's do it this way There we go, cool. Hey, Busley, welcome to the stream. How are you doing well? Uh, I had a nice one in the US this time, it was in San Diego. It was a beer with blood orange in it. Okay, that's interesting. I think beer, beer works well with citrus. Beer works really, really well uh, with citrus. Uh, that's why you get lime in, in lagers and um, lemon bitters sometimes as well. Um, Never had orange with it, though. That's an interesting one. Speckled hen. I think I've had speckled hen. Uh, it's the Mega 65, the 6510, or some other variant. It's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of variant. It's, um, God damn it, my lip. It's a, 45 DSO2, as Andy says, which is uh, based on uh, the 65 CEO2, which is based on the 6502. So the 65 CEO2 added an extra register uh, and, a, and a few other commands. It got rid of all of the illegals, basically, uh, and replaced them with... God damn it, I caught my lip. It got rid of all the illegals and replaced them with uh, useful commands. So, so now you've got... Uh, uh, Z register, a few new new uh, commands around the Z register. You've got um, pushing the X register and Y register and Z register stack, which is good. 
Hey Vintage64, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Hope Texas is treating you nice. Hope it's uh, uh, things have improved over there. I guess they must have improved a little bit because I'm not seeing them in the news as much. So, yeah, I've caught my lip. God damn it. Uh, thank you for the resub, Kate Pocalypse. Really appreciate it. Cheers. Um, okay, so so the attributes we we can enable by by passing in strings of these basically all together. Um, we're just going to make setting this up nice and easy with a macro. So basically, this this thing will be add animation. Um, we want to pass in the index we want to use it on because we want we want to give an index for it. So whenever we whenever we do anything with this animation, this will be the key, if you like, that we use to to do that. Um, a width and a height, so uh, it's it's too wide and only one high in terms of sprites, uh, in terms of raster rewrite buffer sprites. And then our attributes, so ATTR enable, um, and we, or we, well, you can all these together or you can add them together, but the, the, the common way of doing this in, um, in, in kind of C and stuff is to all them together. So, um, I believe anyway, I've not done C for a long time, but certainly when I did it, I remembered things like this being, uh, all together. Uh, no problem. I'm uh, thank you very much for the resub as well. 20 months. I'm wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I fully understand. Thankfully I haven't had to be on call for a long time. So I, I, um, I've escaped that. Um, although I fully expect it to happen. Um, it's, it's more likely now I'm in cybersecurity than, than it was when I was Devin. So, um, so we want to set that and we want to set loop. So that is basically going to be the command that we, that we call and that will replace all of this. So that's going to be much nicer to look at, but it's going to produce the same thing. So what I want to do first though, is I just want to just come at that out a second. I just want to fix this uh, backwards thing because for some reason I had the default as backwards. Um, uh, you can see it here. So, okay, this is easy. We just we just change this. So we're we're loading the attributes here. We're comparing bit four here. I don't know why I had that in. That was not working. Um, and I just need to flip this. And there you go. It's just going to work. This. this the right way now so if i run this hopefully um let's just see what happens with the animation so hopefully it should look exactly the same uh nothing should have changed uh but we will i will do some once i get the macro in place i'll do some messing around to just test all the variations of attributes and stuff um but yeah hey hey death mago uh welcome hope you're doing well um I don't know if you saw. I got the uh, I got the uh, the little Mega sixty five key rings finally. So thank you for that. Uh, thanks for the follow, Ghost Steak. Well, Ghost Ghost Steak. Um, <laughs> cheers to your girly drink. I just had a similar. Yeah, yeah. Drinking. I'm on the girly drinks tonight. So uh, mojito in a can. Uh, from I think this is from Whole Foods doesn't actually say, but I'm sure it was delivered by Whole Fields. Do you know what though, Monsters, I've been trying to think, um, is there is there something, because somebody posted a link to the little uh, Sega um, uh, Game Gear, Sega Game Gear Micro, and it's cool and everything, because it's got a, it's got a, you know, it's a fully contained unit. What I thought would be really, really cool is if you could have something like this. So it looked like this, it was styled like this, but it had something like a a, a nano in. Um, but you had a way of connecting a HDMI to it. You took a little battery or something like that, a tiny little you know uh, cell battery, um, but it had a little HDMI out, so you could just plug it into a TV and it would run like Vice or something like that. It'd be really cool. Uh, it would mean you'd have to carry you'd have to carry a a label around though but um uh, <laughs> uh 
Okay, let's uh, let's crack on with this. So yeah, you can see the animation's working fine there. So let's uh, uh, let's knock this up a notch now. Let's try. Let's let's finish the routine off, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll test out various uh, combinations. I mean, obviously, we don't need to change these values because they were set very specifically to that size of sprite. But I want to try out these uh, these properties here. So let's try and set some of these. So um, we can pretty much, in fact, I can probably just copy this over and then edit it to make it work. Okay, so what do we need to do? Okay, so this is actually attributes. So this is the value passed in here. Um, sprite start index becomes this one. And this becomes next sprite index plus uh, num sprites minus one. Uh, thanks, Amok. Uh, oh, wow. 2,000 bits. Crazy man. Crazy man. More wine. I'm on Copperberg tonight, though. But uh, thanks. Cheers. Let's drink some more of this one. Cheers. I'm glad you're, uh, you're not working now. There's nothing worse than working late. Um, no, it's a uh, it's, uh, Copperberg Swedish fruity cider. It's very tasty. Definitely recommend it. If you want to drink something and you want to you want to feel like you're not drinking but still have the effects. Um then then definitely go for it. But you've got to like cider. I mean it's not it's a very different experience to normal kind of straightforward apple cider. It's uh it's um it's I mean it is made from apples, but it's it's very fruity because they put they put uh well what's in this black currants and raspberries as well. But it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Hey, Proton. Okay, so so that gives us that value. So let's actually, actually let's let's do this like this. Let's let's recalculate that here because we do need to recalculate that. Now I believe actually I can just do plus equals. So let me get rid of that. I think I can just do that. I think that's. I think that's valid. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what I can do. I can just print it here just to be sure. It's going to get lost in all my output, but uh, hopefully it should be right. Okay, so that uh, creates the start index, increments the value, then... Loads, yeah, then stores the next one. That's good. Then this would be width. And this would be height. So that's it. That should do the same thing as that block there. So if I get rid of that and replace it with that and then run this again, hopefully we should see the same thing on the screen. Uh, okay, that's because... Actually, do you know what? The, with constants like that, I am going to keep them... Uh, no, there might be attributes elsewhere. So actually, let's do it like this. I mean, honestly, it's not going to be that often you change these properties like this. But what I might do is um, create another function in a minute to change properties on things. Uh, but for now, this is, this is fine. Okay, let's give this a run. Okay, I'm getting an error somewhere because it's failing. Okay, uh, I'm getting an error in this routine. Uh, okay, apparently that's wrong. Why is that wrong? Macro add animation. Should be fine. Um, hey, Chromos. Uh, 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 I like Thomas the star producer. <laughs> um, why is that failing? On no symbol attribute, but it's there. But then it's failing here for some reason. Um... I'm missing. Am I doing something wrong? <sighs> I 
Oh, thank you. There you go. See, there you go. Five, five AMK points for Andy. First legitimate AMK points. Uh, where's Andy? There he is. Boom. There you go. I need a little. I need a little thing, don't they? If you'd have waited, you got ten. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, thank you. Wow, my brain just didn't see that. It's crazy. But if you'd have waited, somebody else might have got there first. Look at that. You actually have points counting up now. Amazing. Just you on the table. So cool. This is working. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to just try out some uh, different properties here. I'm going to put word wrap on this just for... Uh, simplicity's sake for reading uh, so what I want to try is running the animation backwards uh, so try that I just want to make sure these these attributes are actually doing stuff um, I don't think vertical flip is going to do anything. Horizontal flip probably isn't going to do anything either right at the moment. So these need to be implemented. So I'm going to put stars next to these that need implementing. Okay, yeah, that's working. He's going backwards. Let's turn off the looping. Let's see if it stops looping. Hopefully it'll just go to the end and stop. Uh, so we know that one's working. Hopefully this is going to be a nice system to use as well for um, for future people in this. Okay, so that's, that's not doing anything. So the loop variable is missed, so that needs to be implemented. I think it's just looping by default. Um, that's an easy one to add in. Uh, is this me or the G drive links on Patreon don't work anymore? Um, they should be... Well, today I did add, I, I did move them because uh, I move them every month. Um, so I've moved, let me just double check. Uh, I did move them uh, recently. They should work. Let me just double check the share settings. Uh, I, mean, I don't know when you updated it. I updated the, the link yesterday, I think. So, um, it might be worth just checking you've got the latest link. Uh, let me let me just check the folders, make sure that the folder is in, in the right share mode. Yeah, it should should be. Oh yeah, you have to use the latest the latest one. Uh, make sure you use the one from the very last post. So uh, if you check. Um, hang on. Let me send. Let me private message you this. Let's see if you can. Uh, why, why can I do that there? There we go. Try try that link I've just sent you, Fog Banksy. Um, no, he's, he's supposed to be running backwards. The attributes, uh, you should lose five AMK points for not not reading the code. <laughs> no bugger. <laughs> Does that work okay, Fog Wakes here? Yeah, so, so just be aware, if you do uh, subscribe to my Patreon, the link will change every month for that. So uh, in order to ensure that... Um, uh, those who are subscribing every month have constant access to the same folders and it's the only way i can really do it uh, so every month i change the folder i actually forgot uh, quite late this month so um so that's that's why uh that that happens 
Uh, and for those who aren't subscribed, the content on the G Drive is the same as it's on uh, YouTube, but um, obviously you can download it offline uh, and you get higher quality as well uh, because you don't get the, the awful uh, YouTube algorithm destroying the, uh, the, the upload, um, which really does make a mess of it, uh, to be honest. So I'm going to try ping pong now and see if it goes in both directions. Um, so we know these three need to fix in. We, we know this one works and we know this one works. Well, actually, we don't know this one works. We just assume it works. So maybe we'll fix these, these parameters quickly. So vertical flip is going to be a tricky one to do. Um, I've, I put it in there because I, I want to have it. Um, but it, it's going to be... It's going to be difficult, uh, I think. So is that ping ponging? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, that is ping ponging. Okay, that's good. So that's working. This is working. I assume the enabled is working as well. Let's just turn that off and, and see. Does does it just display no sprite? So the other thing I want to add eventually to the sprites is, um, you yeah. So the enables working. Okay, cool. So we've got half of the half of the properties working. Uh, so I'm going to try getting the loop one working next. I think. Um, yeah. So one of the next things I want to add is the ability to um, change the animation to a new animation. So there's going to be two ways that can happen. There's going to be an, an immediate immediate change so say uh, something explodes you want it to happen immediately there's no uh, there's no transition to it it's just immediately explodes so you would change from uh, whatever animation you had previously to an explosion animation but with a character animation what you might want to do is have a smooth transition so we call that um, uh, animation blending I think it's called in 3d uh, and in 3d it's it's uh, a bit simpler to do because you can you can have kind of animation weights where it goes moves from one animation to the other. Uh, but in 2D, what you have to do is you have to start a, a new animation on a particular frame of the last animation. So the way we can do it in this is we can have um, we can have immediate transition or we can have um, a, a transition on frame. So what you can say is you can say um, change to this animation but only when we're on frame four of the current animation uh, and that way we can go from kind of running animation into a climb animation without a sudden jump between two two frames so we can make sure that animations move smoothly between them uh, i think that's going to be important for this game i really want the animation to stand out in this i think um, reese has done a really good job stoker's done a really good job with the um uh with the animation so i really want to highlight those a little bit so he used to stop the game loading. To, yes, almost every game I had that had Invader Load on it was terrible. Uh, and in fact, Invader Load was the best thing about it. So uh, quite often, that's exactly what I would do. Oh, good damn it. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look at the loop. So uh, the loop is here somewhere. Uh, uh, Okay, so there's a backwards and a forwards here uh, where we carry set store frame. Okay, so the very first thing we should be doing uh, here at this point is checking, actually checking from this point. So, okay, so load the attributes, which is what we're doing there. This is testing. Um, what kind of loop but what we want to do before that is check 04 uh, and if 04 is not set in other words if we're not looping uh, so are we looping so if this is equal to zero in other words branch if equal then we know we don't even need to store the frame we skip this completely and we go to no frame advance uh, because there's no there's no loop here at all. So that's all we need to do. We just need to add that little bit in there. 
uh, I'm going to copy that block because it's kind of the same down here as well. Let's get rid of that. Let's change that for this. So yeah, it's the same thing. Um, oh, kind of loop. I've missed. Yeah, there we go. Should be. Let's keep this all neat together. Okay, so now looping should work. So uh, let's just load up, make sure looping works when it's turned on. So the reason I keep looking this way, by the way, is because I've got the little uh, the little display in the in my in my PC which has the Mega sixty five on it. So uh, let's see if I can I show you that. I can't, my camera's attached. I think you guys have seen it before, anyway. Okay, I'm not. Oh, it's because I need to turn enabled on as well. Now it seems weird that we would have. Um, a sprite that's not enabled or maybe this should be disabled maybe this by default should be dis or it should be on by default and then you turn it off no no i think explicitly turn it on because what we might want to do is just set up a load of animations that aren't immediately there but we set them up so that they're, they're there and they're um they're they're kind of configured and then all we do is we turn enable on just to 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 run them um an example of this might be um uh I'm trying to think of a good example of this uh a, a sprite kind of bullet sprites for instance so the sort of thing you would you'd say okay i want to reserve these 10 sprites for bullets um so i'm going to reserve those i'm going to set them up i'm going to set all the data up for them but they're just going to be disabled they're just not going to be on um, and then when you need them instead of having to set them up every time you just enable them and then they're on so that'd be a good example of that. Uh, enemies as well would kind of you would kind of half set them up. You would say, you would reserve the space for an enemy. Uh, you would say, okay, these these four animations are, are just for enemies, um, and we'll enable and disable them as as we need be. But there'd be a bit more setting up on those. Like all the all these things would need to be set up every time. Cyberdyne Warrior. For a minute then, I thought. Um, I thought Thalamus was in the stream because he likes to play these. And as I said on Tuesday, it's like instantly recognizable. Okay, the ping pong's working brilliantly now, I've got to say. So get rid of that. Let's turn the loop off. So what we should see hopefully now, um, the most basic is when we just enable the sprite. And what will happen is it will play through once and stop. Which actually leads me on to another attribute that we should probably enable at, at some point, which is, um, oh, it's not, it's carrying on. It's still looping. Oh, have I got the right frame in there? Hang on. One, two, four, yeah. Attribute loop, yep, yeah. okay. Okay, that's weird. Why is that not working? That should loop and then stop. So we're going, let's have a look. We're going forward through the animation. So we would be adding and adding and adding until we got to this point, at which case um, we jump to store frame, otherwise we come to here at which point we load the attribute flags. Uh, huh. It shouldn't be doing any store in here. I don't get that, that's weird. And this works out if it's doing ping pong. Okay, so we move forward. Oh, there we go. Nobody spotted it. No MK points. <laughs> Immediate mode. MK points to me. I should get points for noticing my own mistakes. In which case, I would just make loads and deliberate mistakes and award myself points for them all the time.
cool, perfect. So it plays through the animation once and stops. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it at that. I think what I might do, I'm going to add um, a property in here. Um, And this will allow, allow us to play and stop a sprite as well. Um, but I'm not going to do that yet, so I'm going to put two stars on it. Uh, but this would just be another attribute in here, so you would, by default, play would be on. Um, uh, well, you, you would want to put play on. So if I just did this, it would just show the first frame of the animation, and I would have to do, actually, add attribute play in here. Uh, so let me put that on. Although, actually, can if I use speed for this, no, zero means stop. Ah, we've got speed for this. Um, hmm. I, I'm going to leave it in there for now anyway. I'm, I maybe may, might move this at a later date, so I'll put stars next to it. Um, because it's possible the speed would be used to do it. And at the moment, the speed zero doesn't mean stop. I think speed zero just means uh, very... Actually, I think speed zero would mean super speed. Let me try that out, uh, speed here. I think the way itself, I think it would mean it would be like really quick. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll fix that now. Hey Zappy, welcome. You do get points for noticing your own mistakes. You get back the points you lost for making a mistake in the first place. Good point. Oh no, zero does mean stop. Okay, cool. Oh no, it does it mean super slow? All right. One, two. Oh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, okay. So zero is actually doing this one. So that should be zero here, like that. Okay. Doesn't make any sense to most people watching, but it does to me. So these speed values are, are and values that we use on the on the frame timer. Um, so each speed here is is twice as fast as the last one. Uh, so this means uh, two hundred and fifty five frames basically uh, of doing nothing, and then a frame of actually updating. Uh, this means one hundred and twenty seven frames of doing nothing, and then one frame of updating. This is basically how much of a gap there is between each frame update. Um, and zero does seem to actually pause, which is good. Okay, and then the fastest speed would be eight, which is for most things going to be way too fast. But for an explosion, for instance, they might be might be okay. But I think most animations are probably going to run around about speed six, I think. Oh, it's on. It's on pause. Oh, oh, no loop. Okay, this. I'm liking this. I'm liking this system. It feels. It feels more kind of high level, uh, but you know that internally it's still doing very uh, low level quick code. So, uh, but it feels more high level when we're writing it because we're using macros. So, I've used that bit of speed code from your PDF that's made from Mojo. It works well. Uh, which speed code we? T oh, the uh, yes, yeah. It's a uh, it's a really simple system, easy to manage. Uh, you don't have to keep a separate timer for every every animation. Uh, you can just use the the internal timer. It, it's less accurate than other methods because obviously um, you have to do everything as um, powers of two. Um, but for the animation, it's usually fine. I, I, it's very rare that you're going to need uh, exactly kind of five frames between things instead of say seven or three. Um, yeah, see that's that's more than fast enough. Okay, cool. So I'm I'm quite happy with this bit. I would like to just try and get the vertical, uh, the horizontal flip in. I realise uh, vertical flip is not going to happen today, uh, but horizontal flip has to happen because that's something we need for for characters running left and right. So at the moment, this is going to do nothing. I'm fairly certain of that. Oops. Is that? Yeah, that's open thought. So 
yeah okay so we've got no we've got no animation there let me just slow uh no flip there slow that down okay so that means what we need to do is uh when we set position here uh we need to do some small changes here so uh, actually no pointers is what i want to do it at. yeah here If you're putting some sort of mouse, so I've got a mouse using macros yet. Um, yeah, this is so. This is a macro here. Um, works like a function in pretty much uh, any any high level language, uh, and you treat it as such on the macro side as well. You have to do this in in the root. You can't do this in the scope of anything else. Uh, you you write it like you would do a function in another high level language, but you use macro instead of the word function, uh, and then internally you can use these attributes as uh as parameters as as values basically uh, so you can see here i'm using whatever we pass in as attributes as an immediate value so you still have to put the immediate in because otherwise that's going to be an address um uh, and then what happens is it will um whenever it finds this macro it basically is the equivalent of copy and pasting that code here like that and replacing all these with the values in here um so unlike a function, it is just generated. It's just like, it's it's a macro like you would expect in like a word processor or something. It's just adding that code on the fly into um, into the on on the kind of build time into the to thing. And if you spell them right, yeah, good good point. Hmm. I want to check this print so I can remove it as well, just to make sure that that value was getting changed. Uh, next rrb sprite index two so that does work perfectly cool so let's get rid of that uh so that that macro is good that's all working i want to fix the the flip um this horizontal flip so we set these pointers down here now what we can do is um we can do the pointers in reverse instead of forwards so at the moment what we do is we um Where is it? Where will it be? So get correct frame from animation data, uh, which is this one here. And now we have the first frame. So at this point, if we are H flipped, then um, start at N of data, of frame data. And we can do that by adding this value here. Uh, well, we can't there because it's decremented here. So I'm going to store it in another place. Oh, actually, we can store it uh, here. So so we can do that. this uh, and we'll call this uh at the frame that i use a lot more self mod at the moment but i try to use it all in the same functions here so I think I get it. Unfortunately, reference of the program doesn't work for me unless it's basic. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if there are any examples in the PDFs of, of macros. I don't think there are. Um, but we've gone over them on we've gone over them on stream a couple of times. Check out the GitHub if you wanna uh, if you wanna have a look for some. I know there's definitely some being used in the um, in the in the Saturday game. So check out the Let's Make a Game code there's there's definitely a uh, behavior uh, enemy behaviors that use macros in there so uh, worth checking them out thanks andy andy's on the ball isn't he with the modding oh yeah the uh the derek's book on derek morris's book on uh coding goes into 
as well. I think they're really useful. You've just got to be careful not to overdo them a little bit too much because um, they do generate, uh, well, not generate, but they, they you know, at compile time or, or assembly time, um, they are inserting that code everywhere. So it may look like it's kind of efficient. You've got to remember it's not a function call. So you're not, um, you're not writing a small piece of code that's been called several times. You're writing a small piece of code that's been pasted in place several times. So every time you use it, it puts that code back in again. So th there's time and a place to use them. Uh, usually if you're repeating the same block of uh, code over and over again, is a good time to use them, to simplify them. Um, uh, what's the site to... Oh, yeah, somebody's at Sid Deep. Sid, yep. Yeah. Okay, so... So what we're doing here, we're working out um, whether we should do backwards or forwards here. Uh, so in order to do uh, backwards or forwards through the sprite data, so we need to grab this value again. Uh, I should be using the uh, the attributes elsewhere, and I've not been using them, so I'll, I'll use it here though. The uh, the the constants. My God, I can I can't remember any of the buttons on this keyboard today for some reason. So we're checking here for uh, H flip here, and if H flip is not set, then we just jump ahead to here. Uh, I'm always using this now because this is a uh, branch always. Um, it's a much better way of uh, smaller, and I believe it'll be quicker as well. Uh, no, it'll be the same actually. Branch always, so it's going to take three cycles. But um, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd just rather use this because one less than using a jump, so it just feels nicer. Bra, yeah. <laughs> I also like typing bra. It's uh, Uh, I get it eventually. I made bigger strides in six five two by watching past in the last two weeks than having thirty years before. <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm glad you think that. I, I, people have said that to me, and I, I, I'm. It makes me. It makes me happy to know that I. I seem to be able to, to help explain the concepts, and I'm always available for uh, more questions as well. So if you ever do get stuck on anything, um, and then then please just. Uh, please just send me a question and I'll do my best to answer it. Or just ask in, in general in the uh, in the 6502 channel in the Discord and somebody will help you out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It always, always makes me smile a little bit inside and on the outside. Okay, uh, so here's where we need to know what do we need to do again. So we can just grab this same thing here. And this this is a uh, are we h flipped? Like that. Um Uh, so, if so, go backwards through the frame data. Otherwise, forwards. Okay, so that should be enough. I'm hoping now with the flipping, we should see it move in the other direction now. Uh, because all we're doing is we're drawing two sprites side by side. So what we and we 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 have which frame this is a half is and which frame this is. So all we're doing for H flip is we're saying okay, instead of drawing this one and then this one, draw this one and then this one, but flip the data the other way. Uh, okay, and that's not worked. So let me just make sure that that works without that. And if that works, then we can we can work out the next steps.
Okay, no, so I've, I've broken something here. Okay, so let's go back to this bit. Um, so we just take that out. I don't do that. What happens? Oh, I can see the problem here. I can see the problem. So what what the the problem here is what's happening is uh, I'm trying to add a value to an attribute flag rather than add it to this value. So what I should be doing here is um, uh, is this going to be quicker or slower with. Okay, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use that. It's not ideal, but I don't see a way of loading this value and then comparing it. I would I kind of have to do this in two separate halves. The cycles I would lose by doing this is not worth doing it the other way around, so that's fine. gonna work okay so it's going forwards that's good let's try flipping it also that animation's too slow isn't it, it needs to be the next speed up it needs to be seven really um Okay, well, I mean, it's doing something different, but it's not what I was hoping it is. Okay, so let's have a think about this. So, uh... ah, okay. It needs to be this here, I think. Put some hawk. Is the assembler smart enough to predict how many cycles of memory a macro uses? Um, good question. I'm not sure on that one. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd certainly be 45 DSO to it. I don't think it will know. Um, so I'm going to say no. Um, it would be nice to have that though it would be really nice to have that um even if it's just uh yeah it would be useful be really useful even if it's just like a list of here's the macros you used um here's how many cycles they took on average maybe uh, and here's how many bytes you actually ended up using because sometimes i mean what i ended up doing with uh, the the saturday game they make a game on saturday um, I ended up converting some of the macros into method calls instead. So what I would do is, um, where possible, I would transfer the values from the macros into uh, other registers and then call a, a function, thereby keeping the macro portion quite slow, uh, small, um, and making the function call the, the bit of code that gets reused over and over again. Um, and that ended up saving me quite a lot of memory. So. Okay, this seems to be working. So the only thing I need to do is is flip the sprites around now. So I uh, can't remember what the property is for that. Um, if I've even got it set, I hope. I mean, it looks like I don't actually even have it in here. Oh wow, I don't have I don't have sprite flipping in here yet. Frame index data position though. Okay, right, I'm going to have to look that up. In fact, I tell you what, I'm going to take a quick break because I do need to go um, in the bathroom for a second. Uh, and when I come back, um, we'll we'll work out where the flip bit is on that, add it to the rewrite buffer sprites, and then we should have sprite flipping, and that, that saves us basically half the memory straight away then for things. So I'll be back in uh, two or three minutes, guys. Be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Oh, I almost missed Nemo. Catch us. It's impossible to catch up with chat once the quiz has been done. And uh, hopefully nobody said anything critical that I've missed. Okay, uh, so to look in, oh, I'm on the right page. Um, okay, so to horizontally flip a character, I need to set color RAM byte zero bit six. Okay, uh, no. That means in here, this is working out what row it's on. Uh, where's the color RAM look up? I've got to remember the macros I've used, not macros, the, uh, po oh yeah, I've got pointers up that it. Okay. Screen RAM pointer. Color RAM pointer, here we go. Four-bit chart mode, so it's this bit here uh, where it's set in that value. So that is uh, uh, okay. That's yeah. So this is set in uh, byte zero bit three. So on top of this here, I need to add something if the sprite is flipped. So uh, let's have a look. So sprite, uh, let's have a look what properties I'm looking up in this lot here. So. Okay, it's from data, so so yes, yeah, from this lot here. So I'm just going to put uh, I'm going to put another attribute in here. Uh, by default, these are all going to be uh, zero, and all this is going to do is just going to all this value uh, with that eight, and that's going to give me access to. Uh, well, things that aren't really going to matter too much. Um, but vertical and horizontal flip will will be included in that. So we will be able to do the, do the V flip at some point by using this same value. Um, so basically by setting this value to, uh, what would it be, bit six. So by setting this value to two zero, um, it will horizontally flip the sprites. So that's in, where was it, here. So I'm going to load give me a data dot uh, attribute x. Uh, right, well, this is color ram uh, byte zero attributes such as v h flip. Okay, so that should be enough there, and then all I have to do is in uh, chain sprite here. Okay, now does change sprite return anything? Let's have a look because I feel like this needs something setting because we're setting what we're setting here, we're setting a target. Uh, raster rewrite buffer sprite index. We're setting um... Oh wait, are we not doing anything with the accumulator in here? We're not, okay Okay, where else is that being used because I want to make sure because it may be if that's the only place that's been used Which it is Okay, then I can I can mess around with this a little bit. So um, you see here where we're setting all these values in here. Target RRB sprite index. Oh, this is actually setting each individual sprite anyway. Uh, but what I want to do here is set the attributes as well. So I'm going to grab Uh, it's not going to work because that's being used there. 
Okay, let me think about this. No, I can do it afterwards. It's fine. So uh, X register is not changed in here at all. Because we're still using it at the end here. So what I can do instead then is do... Uh... Oh, God. oh my God, there we go. Attributes, flags. Wait, no. Wait, are we getting the X transfer X? X should be coming back here. And oh, oh, this is dangerous. There's a there's a there's a bug here. When we come into here, X register is known and it's the animation sprite value. And it's still the animation sprite value here, but then when we get to this point, it becomes the raster rewrite buffer sprite index. They just happen to be the same at the moment, so it's not a problem. So really what I should be doing here is this. Just to make sure that that value uh, comes back again. Um, now the problem is, is now we need this value to set something in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Figure out how to do this. Let's put this in here. There we go. Right, and now I can do store that at. Did I call it attribute? Or did we call it lowercase attribute? Lowercase. I've got mixed case all over the place here. Okay, that needs sorting out at some point. Now, the thing is, is that's going to give us... Oh, it means we don't need to do that here necessarily. Okay, so that saves us a line there. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need to tidy this up at some point, but um Okay, so in that case what we need to do here is we need to make sure we just end this with uh H flip and and v flip because they're the only attributes we're interested in and they're the only ones that should carry over to here now what i should also really do is arrange these so that they match the attributes in in this side uh, which means I, I need to go through this and i need to make sure i use attributes whenever we see things like this so um and then that way i can re-enable them so let's just go through and, and do this um so here for instance what is one zero uh, and in direction, so uh, so this is just going to ensure that um, I don't have to um, keep these things in this order. I can swap the order around uh, to suit my needs. So that means I can match the horizontal and vertical flip in the in the manual. Um, so I don't have to do a translation of those values. I think that's it. There isn't many of these in here. Uh, they're mostly... This is good. This is a really good version. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let me just check once more. Really good baseline in this track.
it's one of the things I think that stood the Sid out against everything else is that it just had such a cool bass sound compared to anything else. And when you give it a tune like this, then I mean, how can it how can it fail? Okay, that's good. Right, so now I can flick these around. So, so in the manual, V flip and H flip are actually the last two. Um, so this would be V flip. This would be H flip. Uh, now, do any of these also match up? I don't suppose they do. Um, so let's just go backwards through the list instead. So this shouldn't affect the the behavior at all of, of the library, um, of the of the, the the animation kind of system. Um, but what it should do is allow. Two, three. Yeah, it should allow these these values to translate directly into the correct, uh, the, to the correct flip in the. Um, hang on. To yeah, it should translate perfectly. So. Okay, so let's just run. Hopefully, we get exactly the same result we've got there. The two halves of the man running. Um, actually, it probably probably will be flipped now. Oh yeah, it probably will be flipped. Let's let's try that out, and then we'll just check the flip the other way, and then we'll move on to something else. So, boom! There we go. So now we've got a flip sprite, and just to confirm, we will. Um, we flip that the other way just to make sure. Um, I wonder actually, can we put vertical flip in? Probably wouldn't take that much to do now. You can see how this is going to start to become, uh, once we get the this kind of base framework in place, uh, it's going to start to become a powerful library. We've already got the layer system in, so we, we can build these maps super, super easily. Um, using existing tools. We don't need to use anything special. We can just use Asset, right? The script will generate these layers. Uh, the code is is super simple to set up. We just set up a config in, in here. It's all documented. Uh, and really, it's just saying how fast things move in relation to other bits, how wide they are. Really simple. I could even maybe script half of this um, to be pulled from the, um, the Asset, right, file. So this is nice and simple. We set up a couple of values in memory. Um, again, all documented, so it should be very easy for anybody to pick up. Uh, the Raspberry Eye Buffer Sprites you can use directly, but they're designed so you don't have to use it directly. Uh, again, the Sprite Cache is the same. It's, you, can, you can kind of use it directly, but you shouldn't need to. Um, you should just do everything through the animation. So the animation library will be the bit that, that does the hard work. So hopefully this is going to be pretty nice to use. Uh, I'm certainly looking forward to starting to build the game out of the, these building blocks. Um, I mean, quite a lot of the tech is there now. Uh, the sprite system is there. You can see it's running the right the right way now. Um, I mean, there's a few little things I'd like to add to the animations, but they're very tiny things. Uh, and the fact that this is all using... Every frame you see being drawn there is being copied from one area of memory down to, it, down to, the, uh, to the sprite cache. Uh, on the fly, and it's still only using that very tiny slither of a uh, raster time. So that means we've got we've got the ability to uh, translate the data any way we want to. So we don't have to. Um, we don't at the moment. It's just doing a straight copy, but we can use um, we can use uh, encoding and stuff to kind of mess around with this. So so that's kind of nice. It gives us a lot more room to to play with. The flipping as well also adds extra room as well. I mean, basically half the number of sprites we need for, for animations that move in both both uh, directions. Uh, vertical flip seems like a job for the VIC hardware. Yeah, the, well, the VIC hardware will do the same thing. So um, this is the beauty of using uh, using these characters because the sprites, the hardware sprite system is, is, is very heavily based on the C64. It doesn't have the... Um, it doesn't have the flipping, so. Um, but the the new Vic Four stuff that Paul's designed has the uh, has the horizontal and vertical flip, which is really nice. 
Um, so in theory, it should be just a, a matter of uh, setting the property. Um, I mean, if I if I set vertical flip in here, it should hopefully it should vertical flip all the. Um, all the characters it draws it's just gonna it's just gonna do them in the wrong order because it's still gonna do them in the vertical stacked order but hopefully it should flip the the sprites if it, if it does that then it's it's not a huge task to to do but um oh it's really the, the vic 4 is amazing the, there's the vic 4 has got some really really nice nice stuff in it um but yeah ver vertical and horizontal flipping of characters is is an absolute godsend um so I can't actually tell if that's flipped or not because it, all the characters are the wrong way around. But I assume so because um, they're they're stacked incorrectly. So let's uh, let's try and do that. It shouldn't be too difficult to do, really. So so it comes back to this routine again. Um, so let's just separate some bits out here. So this is the this is the tricky area here. Okay. So it works out how many raster rewrite buffer sprites we need. Um, okay, so this is using, was it this value here? No, not that value. Oh, it's in, uh, it's in the Raster Rewrite Buffer Sprite itself. Okay, so what's happening is in, in here, when we draw a sprite, um, we have uh, where is it? Oh, it's not in here. I thought it was in here. There, there's like a height, a sprite height um, in here. And at the moment it's set to six. I think it's probably hard coded somewhere. I probably need to get rid of that. Uh, wow, look at all that that's not being used now. Don't even know what that is. Well, I don't think it's used anyway. So somewhere in here, there'll be a count down from six or a count up to six. Um, seeing it though, okay, let's. Oh, is it this compare y there we go it's wherever that's been set so it's been set here uh from mode two. Oh wait what oh that's been set here oh this is just working out how many rows it needs to do so um work out which row this is on compared to row screen count so it divides it by eight, works out which screen row it's on. If it's aligned to the grid, then it has to do an extra row. Ah, why is it getting this? There is somewhere in here where it's picking that it should do six, and I need it to just go the other way. Well, I mean, vertical flip's not really needed that much at the moment, so I'm not going to spend too long trying to track this down. I think I need to add some more comments around this. It's uh, it's not obvious what it's doing. Uh, well, I, I mean, I get what it's doing, but I, I'm not seeing where the... Uh... Let's get rid of these bits as well. I don't need these anymore. So this is initialization. So this sets the, the, the basic screen up. Uh, ready for uh, like the grid of raster rewrite buffers. This clears that grid. Um, points are high. Okay, points are low. Okay, points are low will be ah, this will be the start. So this is what we'll be incrementing here. Uh, so sprite pointers somewhere is probably going to be advanced. There we go, increase word sprite pointer. So it's this bit here, okay. 
So basically, this would need to be. Um, I see. This is another beautiful thing about uh, sixty-five CEO two. Uh, hey, create ID or created um, sixty-five CEO two or forty-five DSO two. Uh, you can increment a word, uh, which is really nice. It saves you having to do. I mean, the equivalent would be, uh, you know, in, uh, and then. You know, it's the equivalent of doing this. Uh, produces the same flags as this, but it does does the same thing in, um, well, what, four less bytes and probably way less cycles as well. So, hey, Mr. Kohler, how's it going? How you doing? Uh, you can't, oh, I thought you meant me then. I was, <laughs> good for vertical scroll and not much more. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's really needed in this. So I think I'm going to leave it because... I don't know where the um, somewhere in here there is a there is a kind of a, a count of six for the sprites and I don't know where it is. Maybe it's in the layer comp. No, it won't be in the layer comp. It would it? That's no, not there. And I don't know where I've put it. <laughs> so I'd need to track that down. I don't want to spend too much time on that. But um, but you can see that the you know the the basics of the flip code do, do work. We just need to essentially what it will be is. Um, instead of doing uh instead of doing this here uh we would do the opposite we would decrease the sprite pointer uh and the, the but the sprite pointer here is each individual character that makes up perseus so perseus is made up of 12 individual characters um, that are 16 pixels wide and eight pixels high so they're stacked um into two row two columns of six uh so basically a sprite pointer is point it's not actually a sprite pointer, it's a character pointer it's pointing to uh, an individual character uh, that's going to be used to, for each one of those. So there are 12 character pointers or sprite pointers as they're called here in this RRB sprite system, uh, which point to individual sections of the sprite. Um, so what we're doing is we're drawing the top one and then as we draw down the column, we're just incrementing that sprite pointer to draw the next piece as we go along. So the, the reverse of that would obviously be to start at the very last one and as we move down the column, decrease the sprite point so we go up through it instead. So... Uh, just going to be lurking while you patch things. Uh, okay. What are you playing at the moment then? I saw you playing Gauntlet uh, when I joined, uh, was it Tuesday? Uh, it looked really good, actually. Uh, I think it's a SNES version you were playing. My God, my li I've got really dry lips and sore chapped lips or something. I don't know why. I have a feeling it's this, you know. Since I changed to uh, CBD, it's been uh, it's my my lips have been really dry. I don't know if it is this or not, but uh, oh, that's a strange. But see, before I had it mixed with the uh, with the cherry cola nicotine stuff, so now this is just pure CBG, no nicotine at all, uh, which is what I want to try and get onto and and avoid. Uh, I was on the Mega Drive, okay. What flavor is that? It's weird. Dos, do, do, si, dosi cake. Dos, dosi cake. I don't know what that is. Sounds like a Japanese cake. That's really weird. I had a strange dream the other night as well that I had a fish pie flavored uh, liquid. Why? <laughs> Why anybody would have a... Oh yeah, doshi, doce, doce, yeah, or Italian. Or is it dolce? It's dolce in Italian, isn't it? Dolce, there you go. I knew it was something like that. Uh, otherwise, I've been playing a bit of Spelunky Two here and there. Spelunky Two is really good. I really like that game. That's that's a masterpiece of uh, procedural generation. That that game. It's very very good. Uh, very well done. Very. Um, a lot of the time when you do procedural generation, you tend to make um, either very boring looking levels, or if you make interesting looking levels, the learning curve is all wrong. Um, and they've got it spot on in in both cases. You can play through, and it feels like you're going through. Uh, manually crafted learning curve um, like the difficulty ramps up properly 
but it's just completely procedural and it still looks very interesting as well. I think the graphics are really nice on it. It's a great game. Great game. I need to play more on it actually, but I've been I've been hooked on Valheim, so that's not gonna happen. All right, so let's turn this flip off uh and let's move on to something else for now. I think I'm I think I'm kinda happy with what's working on this. Let's just take a quick look. So we've got um Horizontal flip is working, definitely required. Vertical flip, not so much. And there might be a few things um, that um, that might be useful, but um, I can't think of anything offhand why we'd need V flip. So I think that'd be fine. Uh, I like everyone seems to be playing, but yeah, it's it's an amazing game, Mister Color. It's, it's one of the one of the most well thought out, um, peaceful, casual because you, you can just play it so casually. It's so nice. I've easily got 70 hours in it now over two weeks. Well, let me have a quick look. Let's get embarrassed at my uh, at my playtime. Let's just move it up here out of the way. Uh, yeah, 75 hours. 75 hours played. Uh, and most of that has been single player. Most of that has just been me very, very casually just churning along, building my little bases and, um, and stuff. Like I'm, I'm trying to build a whole, um, a whole kind of bridge and road network now. So I can I can carry my cart everywhere and fill it up with shit and then go on because I, I started trying to run down a hill with a cart attached to me and it just made a mess. So I've decided to start building bridges over rivers and stuff. So so there's a little bit of engineering going on in there as well. But yeah, it's it's very very cool game and you can you can play it kind of like hardcore and go in it with nine friends and. And just kind of speed run the game, or you can sit back and you can really casually play it. And um, let me just load this up again. Hopefully, it just load properly now. Uh, you can play it kind of nice and casually, and just uh, just play on your own. And um, uh, pub public uh, public game. Yeah, you can play it publicly as well. Um. But um, I mean, I, the thing with playing it publicly is I wouldn't want to do that because people can just kind of steal things off you, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how it works, but um, but it is a, it's a lot of fun. It's a, re a really, really lot of fun. It is crazy addictive, though, I've got to say. Um, if you like any kind of kind of building or survival game, uh, then you'll love it. Uh, OK, let's do let's move on to the next macro. You mean people can be twats online? Yeah, so I only play it online with uh, two friends that I have from work. Um, I've known them for ages. I fully trust them, uh, and hopefully they fully trust me as well. So I don't mind, you know, we don't we don't mind creating a base together. No one's going to steal anything, and and because you can kind of take stuff from your own world and bring it into a new world. Um, so we we kind of work together and we build these bases and. Uh, and just kind of slowly progress towards things. And then whenever we kill, um, my wife and play, play a lot of survivors. Yeah, you can set up a dedicated server. In fact, somebody's worked out how to get it running on a Pi 400 and a Pi 4, although I wouldn't recommend it. I would probably set up a, 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 dedic a proper dedicated machine for it. Uh, but what we do is we just set up private sessions. So you can start a friends only session and then you can add a password to it. So as long as you've got, a, uh, if a, with a friends only session, any of your friends on your friends list on Steam can join, um, or you can invite them, uh, but you can set a password to it as well. So you can make sure that only you can go on it. Uh, and the server itself is just stored in two files. So you can play the game together, and then you can share that those two files with uh, with the other person, and they could host it instead and, and continue or whatever. So it's very easy to kind of... Um, to restart the database and it creates backs backups for you and stuff. It's uh, it's it's really well made. It's it's a beautiful game. Um, very stylized as well. So don't expect like the most realistic graphics, but they're um, they're they're a strange combination actually. It's like pixelated, stylized. It's it's you'd have to see it to to understand. Right, let's make, let's make another macro. So um, I'm not going to do this one yet. Um, color. Hmm. How is color working here? Because I wouldn't have thought color did anything at all at the moment. Um, so we do have color here. Let's just see what it's doing. 
because yeah, it's not doing anything in here, and I can't imagine it would do anything. Oh, actually, it is going to do something. So there is uh, color palettes, and these there are sixteen different palettes you can pick. Uh, well, actually, it's thirty-two, but we we use sixteen for the raster rebite buffer system. Um, and that color at the moment is just zero in here. If I was to set that to one and run this again, you'll see it. It, it looks very different because um, I'll get a completely different pattern. In fact, you might not even see it. it might well, it might just turn black actually. You got a spare machine for hosting things. Perfect. Yeah, you, I I think you'll really enjoy it, and, and especially if you like um, survival games, you'll absolutely love it together. It's it's so good. Just kind of. Um, I mean, God, I, I, the first 20, 30 hours or something I spent in that game, I just spent building houses. Uh, I got enough to enough kind of things unlocked that I could build kind of different shapes. And I just built this massive mansion, uh, multi floors with battlements and all sorts. Um, okay, what's failing here? Oh, because I put that in. Okay, let me just get rid of that and I put that. Uh, and yeah, you can, you can just get lost in in the building kind of things, and you can kind of go, um, you can go at all out crazy for it as well, like soap. So I've I've got like a huge carrot farm. I've become like the carrot <laughs> carrot king at the moment. Yeah, you do have to build defenses for things. Actually, that's not changed any of the colors there. I wonder why that's not changed the colors. Uh, okay. So I'm setting the color here. It's not changing anything there. Okay, let me just see where color has been used in here. Because so we do need to get this right because the color palette is important. So it has been set here, uh, which is setting the color in. Let me just write what that's actually doing. So this is uh, color RAM. By one. Now, I believe it's the yeah. So uh, color around byte one, uh, bit zero to three is the uh, palette number. <clears throat> so it should be should be setting that value now, unless that value is copied all over the show, which I don't think it is, um, or it's just being reset for some reason. So uh, let's just have a look. So it could be in sprite cache. Let's just check it here. No, I'm not seeing the word color in there, and the word color in here appears only here. Okay, interesting. Uh, might come back to that as well in a minute. Let me just try setting the, the maximum color value and just try that. Uh, but I can come back to that in the macro. It'll be a separate macro anyway. That It's not going to be the same one. Uh, with Megasix 5, is it possible to write a state uh, a state file directly from your compiler so you don't need to go through boot and load? Um, I I don't know. I'd have to have a look at how the. I mean, you could possibly possibly do something because you do have access to the memory, so you could probably update the memory over. Um, over serial, but I haven't set anything. I've had to kind of do a lot of the set on myself. There is a, a tool called M65, which will just upload things to the machine. Um, but you, you're you talking about basically pausing execution, updating memory, and then restarting execution at a new location. So uh, it's it's certainly possible. I'm not sure how much I'd want to do that. Because there would be certain elements of code that may be um, fire once and change during during load. So, for instance, uh, I don't think I've got any at the moment, but there's certainly times when I've had uh, loops which will update that uses self mod that updates, uh, and because it's only ever fired once, I don't bother to reset those values. Whatever values they're compiled, uh, like assembled with, as start values, that's what the start values are. So. Uh, yeah, you'd, it it would be situational, but I mean, it definitely could be done. I just haven't had the time to to think about building those tools. Uh, all the people have been doing the kind of 
um, the tools. In fact, I do need to update my uh, M65 Connect because there is a newer version that I need to have a look what's in it and uh, see how good it is. I also need to get M65 debug set up because I've still not got that set up. I don't know. I don't even know what it does. So. Um, anyway, animation color doesn't seem to do uh, anything there. So let's let's skip this one for now. Just put a to do on it to do uh, color palette selection. Oh, God damn it. Seems not to do anything. Okay, and let's work on positioning. Okay, so uh, position animation is going to be a nice simple one. So again, I'm just going to create a macro up here. I'm just going to call it position animation. Now, position and animation is probably going to happen um, using uh, registers rather than um, values hard coding in. So I want I want both options here. Here. So index, um, and then x pos and y pos. Now index is almost certainly not going to be uh, hard coded in, but I will allow it somehow. So what the way I'm going to do this is quite simple. Um, I'm going to allow a few different ways of these values being passed in. So in this case, what we would be doing is we'd be passing in the the index hard coded. And then we'd also be passing in these values hard coded. Um, so let me let me just do the the hard coded values first, and then we'll work out how to do that. So the x position would be zero eight eight because we need that upper byte here. Uh, we don't need to really put the zero here, but I'm just doing it to emphasize that we need that extra byte, and then eighty here. So then over here, this would be um, plus index here. And then this would be uh, the lower part of x pos, and then the upper part of x pos, and then y pos. Now, the thing with this is, this is all very well if we want to do this, but quite often when you're positioning things, you don't have hard coded values like this. What you can't do with a macro is you can't just do that and pass in the x register. It doesn't work like that. You can only pass um, hard coded values in. So, what we can do um, is we can create a new system for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in uh, a value in the X register and the Z register for the upper byte of it and then the Y register like that. And I'm going to write here what they, so those are. <coughs> and then here you're going to pass in null. So if these values are null, then it will use these values here. So x uh, lsb x msb y and so this means that if we do want to move something we can do it very easy by messing registers that means this is still hard coded but we'll get to that in a minute so let's try and work that out so okay so this is pretty easy uh so what we do up here um is instead of Instead of using um, uh, let's think, hang on. Yeah, okay. So instead of using uh, this here, we can just do an if. So we do if x pos equals null. Uh, then we do this. Else. We transfer x to the accumulator. I do this bit, and then we do the same here. In this case, we transfer z to the accumulator, and you'll see that what this is doing is this is at, um, when the macro is imported, it, it works out a few things. So first of all, it goes, "Are these values null?" So you'll only ever see one of these instructions in the imported code, but it works out based on what you pass in. So this is where the the instructions become a bit. Uh, the macros become a bit smarter. So, uh, surely parallel is the memory. Okay, talk about something else there. Uh, 
thank goodness we have another currency now. Uh, no, three. We have the two that are, that are kind of unique to the channel, and then we have the weird channel points. Oh, I guess you have uh, bits as well. Shanshan's quiz points. Well, quiz points are just shillings. It's just that it's a, the, a league, basically. I mean, really, there's only two that matter for this stream. It's Shalon Shil uh, Shillings, um, Shimmer Shillings, uh, and AMK points. Quiz points are just Shimmer Shillings. It's just that the 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 points that you get are just for, for the quiz are stored in a stored in a league. Channel points are stream elements thing. They're nothing. To, uh, they're, sorry, a Twitch thing. Uh, nothing to uh, really do with me, but we do use them for. Uh, because you get awarded them all the time, so it made sense for me to put some stuff in to use them. Uh, and bits, you know, the bits are kind of actual currency. So, um, okay, uh, okay. So that's now these two values are being pulled in from the null values, and then this I can do the same with the y pos. Um, so just remember that this is a these if statements s l statements they are never assembled into the code these are these are just assembly time directives this is just to tell the the assembler which of these two instructions to include it doesn't mean that there, there will be a branch in the code uh, at this point it just it's, it's pre-calculated at assemble time uh, which is a thing i think a lot of people misunderstand about this the, the uh the if statements in in kick assembler they're not classic if statements they look and behave like classic if statements but for the assembler not for runtime so uh yeah AM, amk points are points for uh for for helping out uh the code yeah the the reason well, the main reason i've put them in um apart from the fact that andy's constantly gone on about them um is is because i wanted to encourage people to get more involved with the stream um in in a way other than just gambling so i know that everybody likes to gamble and that's fine but amk points is a way to encourage people to be more involved in the stream uh, and there will be a prize at the end of the of the year for whoever has the most AMK. For, there will be a prize for Andy at the end of the year. <laughs> I'm not sure what it will be yet, but we'll we'll work something out. Probably probably every six months actually, rather than uh, no, no, it probably will be a year. We'll probably do it over the whole year, I think. You got grey defender points. <laughs> what would grey defender points be for then? We should have Acmafin points as well for for making bad jokes. If you make a bad joke, you get um, getting all quiz answers wrong. <laughs> uh. Okay. Oh my god! Somebody working very late. I just got a message literally half an hour ago in in reply to something. I answered about four o'clock. So I asked a, I answered a question at four o'clock, and someone said thank you like literally half an hour ago. So they're working very late for some strange reason. Uh, do you get to your grey defender points to shine out your YouTube channel? Okay, so this this should work as it did before right now. Um, so again, I'm going to run this and hopefully we should see the same thing here. And while that... Oh, that's failing to load for some reason. Uh, Expose. Wait, what? How's that an unknown function? Oh, because I've got this the wrong way around, that's why. See, that was an AMK point opportunity there, missed. There we go. Uh, and then while that builds and tests that, I'm just going to copy 
this block. And then put these in for optional. USB, there you go. Did that actually load? That failed again, didn't it? Oh, I've got the null again down there. Okay, thank God. Otherwise, taken from Y. So the other thing I need to do here as well uh, with the positioning, uh, which you can see if I do this. So if I move left and right, you see how the sprite stays in the middle. Uh, it's perfect. It's, it's it's not it's moving as you would expect, um, and that's because the the raster rewrite buffer layers uh, are all moving individually, and the X there is no X scroll going on. Uh, but we want this to behave like a normal sprite. Um, so why why not just have one test and put all the instruments from experience? Do better enough over. It might speak more clearly. Um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't really matter to me, to be honest. Um, I'd have to duplicate that line again. Um, but it doesn't, it does, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's not less lines though, because I'd still have to do it here. I'd have to do it there and I'd still have to do it there. So it's actually duplicating that line. Uh, and then I'd have to do, you know, it, it's not going to be that. I mean, I'll do it, but it's not going to be that different. Oops. But I guess it does read slightly, slightly easier, so... We still got that one down there, and then I do might as well make that the same. But, but I, I mean, honestly, in terms of the end result, it doesn't look, it doesn't make any difference, and it was as, just as readable me the other way. But I guess it's a little bit tidier like that. So yeah. Um, anyway, um, I thought what I was doing there. What was I doing? Oh yeah. So I want these sprites to be these animations to behave like sprites. Now the problem with that is when we do vertical scrolling. Um, we use we use the Y character, uh, sorry the Y the hardware Y scroll to move. So you can see it's not smooth in the Y, uh, and that's just because on the horizontal we're using the actual uh, the layer offsets to draw. You know we're using the go to X offset to move things left and right. But on the vertical we're actually using the hardware scroll, so everything moves at the same time. Um, so you, what you see with with this is that the the sprite moves in kind of eight block chunks at a time eight pixel chunks at a time so all we need to do is when we're rendering um these sprites is we need to add the current uh, hardware score but i'm going to do that um shortly i think i'm just going to get these bits in first okay so the other thing that we might want to do here is is make this optional um so that's where this gets a little bit trickier um in fact would we need to make that optional I guess we wouldn't really. Um, no, we wouldn't. I don't think we would. I'm trying to think of a reason why. Oh, actually, yeah, you might want with like an enemy system. You don't necessarily know the index of the enemy because it might be using like a circular buffer to like a ring buffer to to put these in okay so yeah let's try and make that optional so if that was optional uh then we could pass that in with the accumulator right so unfortunately you do have to pass null in you can't just do that and it work it out it knows how many parameters there are so you have to pass null values in Okay, so the problem is here, if if the index is not defined, so if index, so I, I think it's probably going to be best 
let's just have a look. Okay, so if index equals null, uh, then we need to do a certain thing. Otherwise, we do this thing. Now, uh, we're using all three values here. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to push. Uh, I'm going to push X onto the stack here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do load X with index. Sorry, here. Otherwise, I'm going to transfer accumulated to X. Okay, so let's just write a little note in here. What's this doing? So, uh, set uh, indexing X to uh, index value or contents of A. Now, it does mean that whenever we need to use this uh, value, we need to pull it. Now, that's only going to be used here. So we need to make sure that it's used on both sides of this branch so we don't fail. This is quite easy. We can just pull from the accumulator here, and that's going to give us the X value. So, so this is saving X MSB. Uh, load X MSB. But what we can do is uh, we can wrap this up here as well. So we don't do that, but we only do that push if we need to do it. We're not wasting that. Then that way we don't have to do it on both sides of the branch. Um, Okay, so if we do need to save it, then we do save it and it gets stored here. Now we can use uh, comma X everywhere here. Now we could optimize this a little bit further and say if the index is null, then we just use a plus index. Uh, sorry, if the index is not null, we use plus index. Otherwise, if it is null, we use comma X. Uh, there's going to be a one cycle difference uh, between all those, which means we'd save six cycles by doing that. Um, and it's a macro, so it only ever include the right half of that but i mean it's going to be such a small thing it's um when when you've got 40 times the cycles per line it's really not a, a huge issue and it's going to keep the code a bit tight if we don't do that um okay that should be fine so let's see if that runs okay now we're getting an error oh that's because of this bit here uh it's on the wrong side there we go Cool. Now, the only thing I'm going to do here is I am going to change uh, this bit here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to uh, restore X. Uh, just because these uh, pull and push are quite expensive. Uh, so it's easier to just do it like that. Hopefully this works with if statements. I don't see a problem. It should do, I think, as long as it takes the right branches. Uh, Ah, uh, it's going to, uh, damn it, okay, kick assembly is going to get confused by this. Unknown oh, symbol rest X. So even though that symbol is here, it doesn't know it's here because of this. Okay, that's fine. That, this just means that what I need to do is this on both sides of this. So it's starting to get a little bit messier, but this should hopefully allow this to still work. Because these these create a kind of scope. Um, uh, yeah, okay.
you've got to be aware of that in, in kick assembler is that you, the assembler will try and work out as much as it can as it goes through the code. Uh, so it's a multi-pass assembler like most assemblers are. And the first time it goes through, it will try and resolve all the labels and things like that and try and work out where they are. Uh, and then the second time when it goes through, it will then work out the code that points to these labels and stuff. So the problem with that is because we had an if statement, um, it doesn't know the first time it goes through where that label actually exists because it hasn't actually evaluated the if statement yet. Uh, because those two things existed in different if statements, it doesn't know that both conditions are the same on the if statements, although it could if it was a bit more intelligent. But I mean, it's it's probably a bit much to expect from that. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that's why that problem came up. So by moving it into the same block, so this this kind of block here, um, it means that it can actually store that in this location because it knows if it gets to this side, then this is absolutely fine. So it will just record this as like plus seven from here or whatever. And uh, actually, it should yeah. I mean, well, by by this time, it's already started resolving things. So yeah, uh, it seems to work anyway. Okay, so a little bit more complicated than it probably really is. Um, if you actually look at the code that this generates, it's just going to be something like, um, you know, storing these values in these these locations pretty much. Um, it looks way more complicated than it really is, but if you if you think about it, uh, it's not not actually that that kind of uh, bad. So if you look at it from all these values being set, so you would come into uh this side here uh so the only thing that would happen is this would get stored somewhere in the future uh in a, in a future location um this would get set to an index value um yeah and then the values would be transferred into the correct locations uh, could you actually do store Y command? Because I can't remember if you can do store Y commands because that would be nice to to avoid having to do these bits here. It would make it a little bit easier. Let's just have a look that up. Because if we can do that, that's going to be great. It's going to save us a few cycles uh, and a few bytes as well. Uh, store, oh, that's the 32-bit mode stuff. Where's the... Okay, so you can do store y comma x now. You can also do store z comma x. Okay, cool. So don't need to do that anymore. And don't need to do that anymore. So that makes that a little bit easier as well. Yeah, simplifies this quite a lot. Um, you could argue that x, this could, these two could be swapped around. Um, so the X, yeah, let's do that as well. Okay, let's, so if I was to put the X here instead of index, so what does that mean? Okay, so, uh, so the index is now the X register, which is already in place here. So if index is null, transfer a commit to X, but it's already an X, so I wouldn't need to do anything else. So all I'd have to do here is if it's not already set, uh, so if the value is, is not null, then I need to set it. Um, and then the same on this one. Which means The accumulator is already set at this point, so I don't need to do that or that. Okay, that's much simpler. All right, let's see if that works. So by shuffling the registers around here, we've used the indexing properly, so uh, without having to transfer things around. So we've got rid of a few transfers, and that makes this function uh, the equivalent. Well, I'll, I'll copy what that's actually going to put out in a minute okay so it hasn't done it quite right because it's in the top corner so you can see it up there in the top so it's not quite right uh oh and it's because oh, it's because i've set these values wrong so i've got the wrong index so let's do it like that there we go
so as I say, we don't need to do this kind of, um, I guess you'd call it function overloading, wouldn't you? So, well, not not quite. It's not quite function overloading, but um, optional kind of parameters, I guess, uh, between constants and, and, and register parameters. Uh, you don't need to do that in this because really there isn't anything in here that we, you would you would particularly want to do that with. Um, a sprite index is going to probably be hard coded anyway because you need to know a reference to it. Um, the size is going to be hard coded because that's you know, a sprite is a particular size. It's not going to be bigger or smaller. Uh, you may want to change this at some point, but you're going to change it to another known value. It's not going to be a value pulled in from anywhere. Uh, take care, Warlock. Thanks for joining the stream. Have a good day. Okay, so that seems to be working. Everything looks good. So let's have a look. Well, what would this actually be doing? So by passing all these values in, uh, what we're saying is that none of these values are null. Uh, so we'd be on this side. We wouldn't be doing that. So it would just be doing this, this. So it's, it is about as small as it's going to get. The only way this would get smaller is if instead of passing in this index here, instead, you know, instead of calling this, this method, uh, and we were doing this directly, instead of doing this, we would just do, uh, whoops, plus zero on the end here and not do that. So we'd save, uh, two cycles, three, four, five cycles and two bytes, but the flexibility of being able to do it like this is great and that's about as small as it's going to get with uh with the, those values and what about hard coded values which is what we actually are going to pass in here so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put this as an example into this um area up here i think that's the example i think it's example or is it something like that anyway i'll put it it doesn't really matter i don't think there's a documented system for this anyway so Um, so in this case, the hard coded values would be zero eight eight and eight zero, and that should still work the same as well. So let's just give that a quick run, and then I'll, as that's running, I will show you what that's actually doing. So in this case, what that's doing is it's saying uh, load x with zero, load accumulator with eight eight. Doing this basically. It's doing that bit. And so you can see that that is pretty much the same as what we had before. It's exactly the same code, it's just it's generated in two different ways. One way um, we're not supplying these these parameters as hard coded values, so the macro is making these, um, and the other way um, was using all the see this way only uses the A and the X register. The other way uh, was using uh, all the registers, but then we we were providing those up front. So so the end result is exactly the same, same cycle count as well, and everything. So. Uh, the only difference is, is the uh, the hard coding the way uses less registers. So if we're doing it with hard coded values, we can use the X and the Y uh, sorry the Y and the Z register and not worry about them being overwritten by the function. So uh, hey Diogo commits, how are you doing? Uh, okay, so let's see. That's position in the animation uh, done. So let's put that up here. So finally, we have uh, the animation frame uh, speed. Uh, the animation frame speed and uh, the animation itself. So let's do another one here. Let's call this uh, a set animation. Let's call this instant because as I say, there's going to be two. There's going to be set animation instant, which I'm going to create now. And I'm going to create another one just underneath, which is going to be set animation. Uh, 
actually, should I call them instant? Set, in, set animation now. Set animation on frame. So set animation now is just going to immediately change the animation. Set animation on frame is going to do it when the current animation reaches a particular frame. Uh, I'm not going to do the code for this one yet. Um, we'll just do the code for this one. This will really just set up a, a, a couple of extra values. That's all it's going to basically do. But essentially, um, it's just going to create a kind of next animation uh, thing here and a speed. So what we're going to pass into this, so we need to know the animation index, obviously. Um, we need to know uh, the uh, the animation pointer. So the animation pointer is is basically uh, a pointer into this here, which is going to be an array of animation information kind of data and stuff. Um, uh, where's my macro has gone? Uh, and a speed and a start frame. Oh, I'll just call it frame. Okay, so let's set up uh, this. Did I actually change that on the top bit? I did, okay. So again, we need to think about whether these would be, uh, need to be updated or not. Um, I think because it's changing animations, it probably does need to be uh, updated on the fly. But only some of it needs to be updated on the fly. I think index definitely needs to be updated on the fly. As for what these are, these probably don't need to be updated on the fly. These can probably be hard coded uh, because the only thing I can see being variable is not what animation you change to, uh, because you will have some kind of branch system that says, if I'm currently walking, then change to this. If I'm currently doing this, then change to this. So you know what animation you're going to go to. But the index may be different. So if you've got enemies, you may have eight enemies, for instance, uh, and you may be changing enemy three. Um, you wouldn't want to have a different hard-coded one. You wouldn't want to have eight different calls. You'd want to have one that you could pass an index to. Um, but the actual change between animations would be the same. We can always, again, we can always change this if, later if we need to do, uh, but I don't think we do. So I'm going to go with uh, this same system here. Um, where I'm going to make it optional, uh, otherwise take from X, and that should be A there, there we go. And then we've got RAM, which is the animation, let's say my typing is terrible tonight, animation pointer, which uh, the uh, reference to uh, the, the pointer reference, let's call it the pointer, for pointer and references, and, uh, the pointer to the uh, animation animation data. So in, in this case, we, we name it uh, Perseus Run, so that's going to be quite easy. Uh, and that comes from a known thing in here called config. Let me just put this in, actually, how this would look. So this would be set animation now. Uh, for index zero, uh, Perseus run from animation config uh, at a speed of seven and a frame start of zero. So that's what we're trying to do right now. Uh, I should be able to just copy that, drop that into my macro and just change a few tiny little details in here and it should be able to deal with it. Uh, let's just finish doing the parameters first. So this is pointing to the animation uh, animation config data. Let's make sure I put that in because uh, it may contain more than just the frames. Uh, like it may contain the frame that we need, the transitional frames. Uh, it may be that they're hard coded. It may be that they come from the config. I don't know yet. That's something I need to think about uh, when we get to that point. The idea is I'm going to build this game basically all through this year. Um, as often as possible. I think actually on Saturday, uh, I'm going to do a full stream on, on Mega 65 Dev. I'm going to have a 
a full five hour stream on on Mega Sixty Five Dev, and we'll do um, we'll do the game the the, the week after because there's really honestly not a lot to do on the game, and there's no pressure to bring the game out. It's not you know it can be ready when it's ready. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna dedicate a five hour stream on Saturday, I think, to uh, to Mega Sixty Five. Uh, just because I want to get cracking on this, I want to get get more and more done on this. Um, I want to get to the point where actually I can move around, I can jump around, even if it's just in placeholder graphics. I can get all the controls in, uh, and then really it's a matter of I, I want to spend as much time polishing this as possible this year. Uh, but the aim is to to get this done, um, a, a kind of vertical slice of the game done. So we're going to do. Uh, one level, probably a few tasks on the same level, so it's not just like you play through the level once, you'll play through it maybe five or six times doing various tasks as you go along uh, and unlocking a few things here and there um, uh, depending on what we come up with, I, I don't know, it, dep it depends entirely on what um, uh, what, what Reese comes up with for, uh, Reese and I come up with for game design um, uh, but I, I, I can see, I, we've got some ideas. I think it can I think it can definitely work as a vertical slice like that, and it'll be a nice playable chunk of the game. Uh, and then hopefully um, we'll have this ready to go when the Mega sixty five is launched, uh, which could be whenever. So um, I've just got uh, an RTX thirty ninety. How did you manage that? I ordered mine eleven minutes after they were released. Uh, and the only reason it was 11 minutes was because I was refreshing the page like a madman because it was busy as hell. Um, and I was just lucky enough to get one. It still took six weeks for me to get it, though, because uh, I got put onto a, I got put onto a list. So it was, it was a pre-order, not a, um, not an in-stock order. So, yeah. And what did I do? The, I, I put it in my machine, tested it once, made sure it worked. Uh, then took it out and, and basically destroyed the warranty on it immediately by ripping all the shroud off. Because uh, unfortunately, the version I bought had a had a slightly unusual shroud that you couldn't just you couldn't just unscrew and, and uh, unclipped. It was kind of it was clipped on in a way that you had to break it to get it off. So I had to break it, and take it off. I had to unsolder a couple of connectors on the board, so it had some uh, it had some bespoke third party connectors on the PCB. Uh, that got in the way of the the water block, so I had to I had to desolder them. So literally within two days of getting a fifteen hundred pound card, I had it on my desk desoldering parts off it. It was a very nerve wracking moment when I first turned it back on, but it all works and it's great. I should get about fifteen to twenty percent more performance out of it because it's water cooled. So, um, so I've actually got closer to um, whatever they if they bring out a, a, a like a Titan or something like that, it's probably closer to that because of the water cooling. Jeez, yeah, it was. It was very nerve wracking. I mean, I, I'm fairly confident with a soldering iron, and confident with. I used hot air on this actually, um, because it was just a, like a, it was a really fine thing. Um, but yeah, I, I'm fairly confident. But still, when you're doing it on like a brand new fifteen hundred pound card, it's 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 a bit nerve wracking, especially when you you know you you you've basically had to break it and and destroy the warranty on it just to get to the circuit board um and then the first thing you see on the circuit board is actually my block is not going to fit i've got to desolder two of these connectors off um but they, they, i mean they were only like eight pin connectors so they're pretty easy to pretty easy to pull off so um but yeah it was very very nerve-wracking i'm I'm all right with soldering though i can fix an xbox 360 and an xbox uh xbox one as well i can fix i've got a couple up there actually that i need to need to look at in fact i think I think two of them I can't fix. I think their North Bridge has gone on them, so and I don't have anything to reball North Bridges, nor would I want to attempt it. So, um, but yeah, but the thirty nine is really, really nice. I, I, I love it as a card. I think it's, uh, it might seem overkill to some people, but I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's a wonderful card. It's great for video editing. Absolutely awesome for video ed editing. Uh, I am Ryzen. I've got a 3950 in mine at the moment, um, which is more than enough. I don't really need more than that. Uh, the only thing that can that makes me maybe want to go for a thread ripper is um, it is the extra PCIe lanes. Uh, so, like, if I wanted to put another 3090 in and go SLI, which I probably not, I, I, I was quite disappointed with SLI in the 2080s, um, then then I would probably need to 
uh, you know, have a thread with it because I have two PCIe four SSD uh, M2 SSDs in, so they they tend to eat the lanes up quite quickly, uh, along with the 3090 as well. So and the and the 64 or 128. No, I think it's 128 actually. No, it's 64. Yeah, 64 gig of memory. Um, right. Anyway, uh, so let's have a look. So again, super simple. Just need to change these values here. Uh, so this becomes the lower byte of that. That becomes the upper byte of that. And this becomes the speed. This becomes frame. And this becomes comma X. And that's all of that. So that does the job of all that. And you can see now that huge block of code that we had before is now replaced by three relatively flexible and much easier to read and understand uh, macros. That's one of the great things about macros is they do they do create some kind of legibility to your code. Uh, does it run your OBS currently? Um, yeah, I mean, it's... I, I, I rarely have any problems with the CPU at all. Um, it's 16 cores and 32 threads, so I, I don't think I need more than that. I, I did look at the uh, 5900 series, um, but honestly, the gains are so small uh, for what I would be using it for. It's not worth it at all. If I was running at a lower resolution uh, with a slower graphics card, then a 5990 would be worth it over a 3950, but... Um, a 5950, sorry, would be worth it over a 3950. Um, but at 4K um, on a 3990, it's it's just not necessary at all. Um, you, you know, you're probably going to gain one to two frames per second at most uh, on things, and probably not even that on some, some games. Uh, some games, it'd probably be exactly the same because it would be graphics card limited. Um, but at 4, 4K, um, you are graphics card limited more than CPU limited anyway. Uh, and if a game really doesn't rely very much on your CPU, then a 5950 is not going to do anything at that resolution. Right, on to the last side. I've got about half an hour left. Um, so I, said, I wonder if we can figure out this color thing. That'd be a good thing to end the night on, I guess. So look at all that we've got rid of as well. So this is this is our test loop at the moment, um, and you can see it's it's getting much much smaller. We've got macros here for the layers. Uh, might might macroize some of this because because uh, for instance that could be one macro just for for dealing with the layers. But uh, I'll I'll leave that for for now. Until I know for sure, because there might be some reordering of this as well as we go along. I did want to potentially look at um, doing a debug overlay tonight. So one of the things that I'm going to be using the hardware sprites for is for the uh, UI over the top. Um, so I don't want like a, I don't want a massive UI bar that kind of goes across the whole screen because there's no need for it on this. Uh, on the C64, you tend to have these bars because it's a way of reducing the number of lines you have to scroll. Um, so you have these kind of full kind of panels that take up the entire width of the screen. I don't want to do that on on this because there's no need for it at all. I, I would like to have a more sparse UI with bits maybe in the corners. Uh, and so for that, sprites are absolutely perfect. So uh, yeah, the last V8 where half of it is just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, th th people think, you know, when... Um, when Doom was on the PC and you made the window like a postage stamp size to get performance boost, people thought that was kind of a un kind of clever thing to do. But actually, the Commodore, you know, eight bit computers were doing it for years by just making the screen space smaller and smaller and smaller so there was less update. Uh, it's just they weren't doing it in three D. That's all. Um, I remember when I first got a, a PC, I had a four eight six DX two six six, and it was great for Doom. I could play Doom pretty much full screen i don't think i could turn the high res mode on um i think i there was like a 400 by 300 mode wasn't there and a three three twenty by 200 mode 
and I couldn't have the 400 by 300 mode on. I had to have the 320 by 200, but I could have it full screen. Um, and then when Quake 1 came out, I had to play it in a tiny, tiny little window because it was too much for the, the processor until I got a Pentium Overdrive. Uh, and then when I got a Pentium Overdrive, I couldn't believe it. All of a sudden, I could have the screen massive again. It was great. First PC was a DX4 100. But yeah, I had the DX266. Uh, so I had the model just below below that one. Uh, it was great. I mean, I absolutely loved it to pieces. Because uh, I was quite late to the PC crowd. Because I was, what, I would have been... I would have been probably about 18 when I got that. Because up until that point, I was... Uh, I was very much a Commodore Commodore user, uh, pretty much full time. I was still using a C sixty four until a few few weeks before I got that PC, and I only actually used an Amiga, like properly used an Amiga, like I owned my own after I'd had the PC. I ended up selling the PC because I needed some money, um, and it was, I could see it was going down in value a lot, so I sold it after probably about a year of owning it, um, and got a, got an Amiga instead. And then then ended up buying, got an Amiga, I think it was a 600, uh, and then ended up getting um, a small kind of like a really, really tiny media PC thing, like a, I forget what they called them back then. It's this horrible, horrible thing from Dixon's. It cost me about 300 quid and it was terrible, but um, but it was a PC again. So, uh, and I think that was like a Cyrix 333 or something like that. Anyway, that was, that's my PC history. Uh, okay. Uh, what's it gonna do? Uh, oh, let's let's just check that that works. It should work. Uh, uh, first PC was a Sanyo five 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 eighty eighty eight. Where, wow. see, I'd used PCs before then. I'd used PCs quite a lot. So I'd done. Uh, I'd used them in my job as well. So we used to have a 386 in the office. Or is it 286? I can't remember. It was, it was some really crappy old uh, PC we had in the office. Uh, and on my lunch lunch hour, I just used to sit on that and type things in in uh, Q, QBasic. Might have been QBasic, yeah. And then before that, when I when I first, uh, like the last year of school, we used to do uh, word processing and databases on, on not at school because we never had like, proper computer lessons at school we had commodore pets and stuff at school um but i had like a we had like a uh, like a training company that would do you could you could apply for kind of computer things through that and we used to go and do databases databases spreadsheets and word processors um and i try i tried to go to the local college and i did pascal for a little bit at the, at the local college but i couldn't afford to keep doing that so I left Turbo Pascal, it was as well. Um, okay, uh, okay, this seems to be working, so that's pretty good. Uh, actually, let's put a couple more things in here. So let's, uh, okay, let's do add attribute, add animation attribute. Uh, hang on. So what I want to try and do here is have set animation attribute clear animation attribute so it's pretty straightforward uh again i don't see foresee any reason why these would need to be um uh the, why the registers would need to be used here these these are probably just going to be hard coded so um these are fine i think like this uh, and the only parameters here are going to be really simple uh, index, which would be would be one that would use these. So that would be inside the function. 
actually let's copy that first. Oh, damn it. There we go. So it should be index and attributes. So you'll be able to set more than one attribute with this. Uh, I'll just call it attribute ATTR in here, actually. Uh, but generally, you're probably just going to be using one. So this you would use this to flip the flip the sprite around. Pascal rocks. Yeah, I, I kind of liked Pascal at the time because uh, I hadn't really used anything like that before. I'd used Basic on the on the C sixty four and assembly language, of course. But it was the first time I'd really used a PC uh, for programming. Um, and I really liked the I liked the idea of having an ID that I could copy and paste him and things like that. It was just like this really novel thing to me. So I kind of got on with it quite well. Um, and coming from basic, it was it seemed like a fairly natural progression. It, it didn't it wasn't too much of a jump up, if you know what I mean. Um, so that that was kind of nice. But then I, I just didn't continue with that. I ended up uh, I ended up leaving that course because. I couldn't afford to do it. I was paying for it out of my own uh, my own wages, and I I was only just out of school at that point, so I couldn't really um, I couldn't really do anything uh, about it. So I I just kind of I ended up leaving that, and then the next time I coded was it, I mean it would have been a little bit of key basic work, but then really I didn't do anything until. Um, until my late twenties, I mean, I was must have been like twenty nine or something when I actually got a job coding, and it was only because I'd gone to college to do uh, multimedia design, which was uh, not not that amazing to be honest. But um, what it did was give me a foot in the door at a company um, doing some flash stuff, and from there I got to kind of because uh, I had no qualifications in it whatsoever other than this B tech in in uh, in multimedia design. Um, and that that gave me the opportunity to start doing stuff with uh, Shockwave and Flash, and I got to kind of show that I could code. And then from there, I started to um, like you know show that I could do things in you know C sharp, in C, in uh, in Java, in JavaScript. I, I just kind of showed that my coding wasn't just some Flash based thing. I was I could actually code. Uh, and then once you know, once you got your foot in the door and you got a bit of experience behind you, get, getting the jobs gets easier and easier and easier because then you've got you've got a history then to show. Otherwise, they're taking a gamble on you. But I was, I'm grateful for the for the company for taking a gamble. I wasn't grateful for the way they um, the, the way they kind of let me go in there, and I got made redundant. And it wasn't like any normal place that got made redundant. He phoned me up on my day off and said, "Don't come in anymore," and they didn't pay me for the month. Still owes me money. I took him to a tribunal. He still owes me money to this day, and I know I'll never see it. Um, attributes to turn on in this animation. Okay, so this is really, really simple. Uh, this is just going to be. Um, we're going to take this thing here, uh, and then we are going to load the accumulator with data dot animation data so I don't need data dot yeah data dot attributes flags there we go call it x and then I'm gonna all that with this value and then we're gonna store it there again and that's it that's all it's doing really really simple just turn them on the reason I want to do it as a macro is just because we're already using macros for these animations. Let's try and stick to doing that as much as possible. Then the animation system is almost completely abstracted away from the assembly, um, but you still have the options of, of kind of, you know, passing in an index here, for instance, and passing in null, null here. Um, so obviously the we need the opposite of this, which clears those values. So attributes to... I could say turn on, turn off, and this is uh, pretty much the same thing except we put and in here, and we do two hundred and fifty five minus those values, and that's just going to give us the complement basically. So the complement being 
um, like anything. So when you've got angles, you have complement angles, you have a complement angle. So the complement angle of uh, 25 degrees is 65 degrees. It's basically take a right angle, take the 25 off, and that's the complement. It's the same thing in, in uh, computing. Uh, a complement is you take the, the highest number in that particular base. Uh, in this case, we're in... Um, uh, we're in base two using uh, eight bits, so two five five is the highest value, and then minus the uh, the original value off, and that gives you the complement of that value. Uh, in in uh, in this, it's called two's complement, um, and the reason, uh, well, no, it's not. Actually, it's just the complement. Two's complement is when uh, you want to do you do two five six minus that value. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, to get to get like the uh, the negative values, I've always said complements. Uh, two's complement is really easy if you think of it on a number line. I've I've gone through this actually in one of my first uh, videos. Uh, if you imagine a number line uh, with zero at the beginning, um, one two seven at the end, and then minor. You know, if you count along and then you go up to one two eight, then you start back. At, you wrap around to the beginning of the number line, and what you're actually on is minus. 128 down at that end and then you count all the way up so by the time you go back to 255 again you're at minus one and then the next one is zero and so on yeah anyway uh you then programming basic for msx but quickly good time with this book can you go to richie book and went for c and pc i i tried to learn c very at a very young age i think i was like 13 or something 14 um when i first picked up c and i think it was the wrong time to to look at it because firstly i didn't have a computer to do it on so i was trying to learn these concepts in my head and had no way of no way of kind of you know trying them out um and it was it, for me it wasn't the right way to do it um i think if i'd had the computer at the time i would have done it but by the time i got the pc um i kind of moved on from that and i was already starting to think of other things it was only when i started playing quake 3 which was a bit later on uh, uh, maybe whenever quake 3 came out um and and half life quake 3 and half life were the two because uh, they had mods uh, and unreal tournament actually but unreal was more to do with maps but quake 3 and half life they had modding um in yeah 98 sounds about right um and that it was at that point that i I started to uh, look into modding these games and obviously you needed to know C uh, to do that. So um, yeah, that, that's, I learned it through modding Quake. That's where most of my um, C knowledge is. My, my C knowledge is spotty at best, but I, I know enough to to read it, to understand what's going on in it. I might not know how to set up a project from scratch, uh, but I'm sure I could learn in, in a matter of, you know, hours or something. But um in fact, I do know how to set a project up from that. Just use Visual Studio. It's pretty easy. Visual Studio Express or something could probably do it. But um, uh, but yeah, I I my my C knowledge is uh, come, started with Quake. Uh, now it's kind of it's come about because I do more um, uh, reverse engineering of stuff. So I will take an executable, reverse engineer it, and then it will give me like a really nasty C output. Um, it's IDA Pro or something. Uh, so animation actually, so this should be clear. Oh, this does need to have uh, animations. Uh, my C sharp knowledge comes from Xbox, uh, from the XNA framework. Um, because when I got an Xbox 360, I found out that you could make. Uh, attribute uh, let's make that the full thing let's make it attribute so it's it's explicit that you can do more than one um yeah when i got an xbox 360 i found out that you could write um games in c sharp for it so set animation attributes set animation attributes Oh, clear animation. Oh, God damn it. Uh, 
uh yeah so and that was c sharp so i learned c sharp to do that and then i started using c sharp for uh, windows applications as well with the uh, wpf which i think was called uh windows presentation framework or something i can't remember um but that was kind of good for doing um some decent uh okay let's just switch these over to control i want to just try some out now uh, that was pretty decent for doing um, basic kind of tooling stuff. So um, then I learned uh, J2ME, uh, Java and J2ME for mobile. So originally I was doing uh, J2ME games for like the early color screen, um, uh, color screen kind of mobile devices. And then I've upgraded to Java when I started doing Android games as well. Um, yeah, but WPF was great for doing tooling. So what I started doing was using it for um, for tooling games. For so I would I would make a game in XNA, but I would do all the tooling in uh, WPF. So we'd have like map editors and stuff. You know what I'm like for making map editors. I used to do all that with WPF. Um, okay, so let's try this. Try doing this now. So if I did this, for instance. Just want to see how quickly and easy it is to to change the animation so now i'm i'm tying the animation to a uh, joystick direction uh, failing for some reason oh what's going on there oh shit, i've pressed the wrong point if you press f9 it really screws about with your code um what else did i learn i, I learned um yeah i, I learned I've, I've learned loads over the years I, I learned um uh well obviously assembly i learned on the c64 oh see that's oh the flipping's gone wrong no for some reason the flip doesn't work Okay, but you can see it's actually trying to flip, but it's it's drawing the wrong sprites now. Um, let me just test something. Uh, let me just get rid of that. And get rid of that and just put this back into the first one. I wonder if it's because it's on the first animation. It's fine on the first bit, but then, then it breaks. I also did um uh was it Blitz Blitz three D basic or something which was uh oh god was it called Blitz Basic? Blitz Blitz three D basic or something it was called. Yeah, Blitz. So I think they did, I think it was also um there was a version on the Amiga. I'm not sure if it's the same yeah, it was it was Amiga. Okay, so so it came out on the Amiga, but I used it on uh, on Windows, um, and then I used a, what, another basic called Dark Basic as well, which was a very similar kind of thing. And basically, they were there were versions of Basic that allowed you to use three D elements in them, uh, which was kind of cool. So I made some stuff in that as well, uh, including I, I did like a, a like an RPG kind of game i wish i still had it it was it was really really simple but um it's just like a very very simple rpg you go and talk to people uh and and then uh you know you don't go and have to kill something it was kind of like warcrafty sort of thing but not multiplayer or anything um i did that but i did all the all the scripting also all the ai scripting uh in a language the scripting language i made up uh, and it was just you could look at it. It was a six five zero two. It was just a six five zero two uh, scripting language, uh, but specifically for controlling uh, enemy AIs and, and dialogue and stuff. But the instructions were pretty much the same. Dark had a similar instruction set to Blitz Basic. Yeah, I think Dark was a little bit. Um, it wasn't quite as good as Blitz. I think it it looked shinier, like everything that they'd uh, 
all the tooling they'd made around it looked a lot shinier, but I think Blitz was more powerful. Blitz had a better uh, underlying kind of architecture, I think, because um, you had like the concept of like proper classes and stuff in in Blitz Basic, which you didn't have in Dark. I thought they weren't called classes; they were called something else. I can't remember what they were called, but um, I just might tell you in here. But it definitely had proper OOP stuff in Blitz, whereas Dark didn't. Um, was it new type? Yeah, so probably something like that. I can't remember the exact name of it. Okay, so that works there, but it fails. So it works there, but it fails in the control layer for some reason. Like, why does that fail at this point? Let's try again. I think we're getting to the end now anyway, but I, I think that will be the uh, the next uh, the next step uh, of this weekend was to uh, was to do that. Uh, the original Worms was Blitz Basic 2 as well with some Wow, okay, I never knew that. That's that's incredible to know. Okay, yeah, so it seems like once it's running, if you change it, it screws things up. Uh, so I have to work out what that's doing because it looks like it's just playing, it's just putting the same sprite on each side for some reason. I don't know why that is. Uh, let's just try something quickly. Let's, let's do that. Let's just try doing the flip without touching the joystick. I'm just going to let it flip over here. Uh, Uh, and more recently, I I've looked at um so I've looked at Unity a little bit because that's C sharp. I kind of like the the look of Unity. It looks fairly easy. I I think it just abstracts way too much away from you though. Um, and while I I know you can kind of delve into it a little bit more, I think it's abstracted so much away from it that that not using those abstractions actually makes it more complicated to use. If that makes sense. Um, because there's not as much around kind of there's not as much documentation around kind of doing the the more kind of super low level stuff in it it's all about how to use the ui to do this and to do that and to set this script up and to do that and just you, the only time you're doing scripting is going if it's left if somebody's pulling left move this left or change the impulse on this so uh, I, I i like the idea of unity but I, I don't think i could use it i think it would drive me mad after a while uh game maker i kind of like i used that for a while uh made a few little mini games in that um i like it because it has all the tools built in but you can do some pretty kind of interesting stuff with it and it seems to be pretty popular in the indie indie scene as well it seems to be pretty um along with unity it's, i mean unity is definitely the biggest but i think the uh i think game maker is definitely up there as well um the only thing with Game Maker is it, it can feel a little bit like cheating sometimes because some of the stuff that is very mundane is done for you. So uh, you don't have to worry too much about it. It's like Unity in that sense, but um, it's a lot easier to get into the script inside of Game Maker. Um, okay, I think that's it then for tonight. So we'll work out what this is going on here um, at another day. I'm not sure. It seems to be whenever I... Whenever I set the, uh, the the flip bit here, it seems to break. And I don't know why. Let me just try something. If I just uh, keep it clear and then set it in here. So I'm going to set it in this loop. Whoops. And then we'll go and find someone to raid. So I'm going to set it in here so it sets every frame. And see what happens. Hey, Judge Dukes. He catches just at the end. So he's just about to go and, uh, go and raid somebody else. Let's go find who to raid. Yeah, see, it's something's going wrong there. Lucinda TTV. Okay, let's do that. Oh, Resident Evil Three. Awesome. I've not seen that for a few, few years. Was that was Resident Evil Three? Was that the one called Nemesis? Resident Evil Three Nemesis. Resident is, or was that was that just a was that just another disc on Resident Evil Two? I can't remember. 
It was Nemesis, thought it was, yeah. Poor morning anyway. <laughs> no no problem. All right, yeah, we'll um we'll go and we'll go and raid her now then. Uh thanks guys for coming along. I shall see you on Saturday. We'll continue this on Saturday. Saturday's gonna be uh Mega sixty five only. Um so full five hours it should be good. Could give us plenty of time to do some stuff. Um I shall see you then. Have a have a nice uh, rest of uh, the day if you're in the middle of the day and have a good good night's sleep if you're not. Uh and let's start that raid and I shall see you all on Saturday. I always do this. I, I say goodbye and then realise I've got to wait for the raid countdown. So yeah, anyway, well we're ready to go now. Take care guys. Cheerio.